Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Leanne here and we are doing a little less resin video. Now I actually filmed this a little bit back in March or April when they first sent me these moulds but I'm only taking till now to edit it because I finally got round to finding all the bits of video and feeling well enough to be able to do a voiceover. Now excuse my voice, I have no idea why I constantly sound like I have a cold or a strained voice. This has been happening for some months and the GP thinks it may be the medications that I'm on to help my breathing. So just bear with me. My voice sounds like I have a sore throat, but I do not. I just have something wrong with my voice cords. So the first thing I did when I got this resin was of course test it out. The pieces that you've seen in the start that were clear were me just trying the mould and trying the resin together. As you can see it's an epoxy 1-1 ratio which means you use the same amount of part A and the same amount of part B mixed together to create your resin. And I found it was really easy to make a glassy bubble free resin with the Let's Resin resin. <laughs> As you can see, I'm mixing some up here. I followed the instructions and before anyone says why are you not wearing gloves, I've explained in previous videos, I have major allergies to all kinds of gloves and I almost dropped my resin there. So I wear um, barrier cream meant for chemicals, which is why my hands look a little bit shiny, a little bit greasy, is because I wear barrier cream. Okay, so I'm putting a thin layer of the resin in the mould. As you can see, I haven't degassed it. I haven't let it sit for any amount of time to get rid of the bubbles because I want to show you that this resin is absolutely great for using the alcohol spray method where you use um, rubbing alcohol to spray on your resin as long as it's shallow enough and it removes all of the bubbles. Now, when a layer is this thin, these are quite shallow moulds, these little heart key rings, the alcohol method is great. I only took one spray and we get rid of all those bubbles you can see in my resin. Now if you leave this resin to sit and degas for a little while, it does degas itself. But I'm too impatient for that and I like to just jump straight in. I'm just putting the last of the resin in, being very meticulous about scraping my cup. As you can see, there's quite a bit of bubbles in both my little pieces here. I'm just moving the resin into that little narrow channel at the top of that keyring heart. You need to make sure you get your resin in there. So I'm quite liberal with the spray here, as you can see, but it takes away all of the bubbles and the ones that are left rise to the surface and pop themselves quite quickly and it only took this one sort of spray in each one to get rid of all the bubbles. I noticed that I had a little bit of dirt and a hair in my mould there so I'm just fishing it out. It was really annoying me because hairs are very hard to catch in resin but yet it seems to attract them and when you have a cat like I do you find hairs everywhere even if they're not allowed in your craft space. Okay so the colourant we're using today is the alcohol inks from Let's Resin that they sent me previously to this mould. I made a petri dish method video before this one and it was not very successful so they reached out and asked me if I wanted to use their resin to try again so that's what we're doing here. Now, I have yet discovered that this is not my favourite method. I like the technique, I like how it looks, I just don't like when I do it. I just, I like control, I like methods in resin where you know exactly what the outcome is going to be. I'm too much of a perfectionist that way and for me this just leaves too much room for error. So you drip on your colour a little amount at a time and then you layer it with the white deeper ink on top and you're supposed to work in layers of colour then white then colour then white and it creates a really cool texture on the front of your piece. Now the problem with this is I didn't know how much ink you're supposed to put in and I probably did not put enough ink or enough white when I was doing this but I still managed to get a pretty cool technique on this little rainbow heart here and I was pretty pleased with the way it turned out. It's a little dark for me but I think that's purely as I did not use enough white ink when I was making these pieces. Now my ink was really stressing me out. It had a little bit dried 
and can said and it kept clogging the nozzle but just sticking a pin down into it cleared it completely and eventually got it to work properly I think I was using tweezers to clear it there I think that's also why my um, ink didn't work as well as it should have is I didn't put enough white on the first few layers of doing this because I had a clogged nozzle and it wasn't coming out very much it's probably why it's a little bit dark too I think if I'd put a lot more white in the first couple of layers it probably would have turned out a lot better so I do spend a little bit of time here layering my colour then my white then my colour but in hindsight I probably did not do enough layers I was so paranoid about putting far too much ink in my resin and it not curing that I was a little bit sparse with it and I'm probably sure that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. I think you're supposed to put a lot of ink on so that the weight of the ink drags down into the front of your piece. I did get a really cool effect with this one though so I'm not complaining, it did turn out really nice. The inks themselves are really nice colours as colourants. I've used them in the resin before I got sick and couldn't do resin anymore. I did try these inks out. At the end of this video you'll see one of the pieces that I played with with some of the colours just to see what they were like as a colourant and they do make a nice vibrant colour. There is a there are two types of white in the ink pack. One is a deeper white and one is a shallow white. If you add the shallow white to your resin when you're mixing up colours you get more opaque colours, lighter colours but if you just use the inks on their own you get transparent sort of bright colours so they are good as a colour and, and as price point goes they are quite reasonably priced um, set of inks. Okay so for this one I was worried about the rainbow over there starting to look like the colours were blending together and getting a bit muddy so I decided to use all the colours in one colour family on this one but as you can see there was something wrong with the nozzle and the ink sprayed everywhere so far too much of that dark red ink went on in the first layer and sadly that sunk and went to the front of my piece so it dominated my piece and you don't really see many effects in this one. But my, my white did start to work, as you can see, but sadly it was competing with ink which had already sunk to the bottom of my mould. So only a little bit of the white shows in the end piece on this one, but you know, it is what it is. It was being very liberal though. If only it could have been that liberal with my rainbow piece. Now the process of watching ink being dripped is not all that interesting so I'm just going to fill in this little gap with a little mini review on Let's Resin so far. Um, so far you know I've said in previous videos I love their moulds, they're good quality, they're nice and shiny, they come out really clean, they're nice clean simple shapes, it gives you a lot of scope for like, a lot of different designs and I'm really pleased with how they're packaged. Um, they take about a month to come but that's normal when shipping from China to the UK and I've been really pleased with them. Their communication with the company is excellent, they're always really nice and even with me being not well and knowing that I can't do resin they've still touched base and they sent me some masks to wear during lockdown because I couldn't get any and they've told me not to worry about the videos right now just to get well so yeah they are a really nice company to work with the resin, um, before I got unwell, I did try it out on a few things and I'm really pleased with the resin. I really like it and will be using it in the future. So this is how the rainbow piece turned out. As you can see, I did not use enough white. And this one, well, let's just not talk about this one. This one kind of reminds me of, I don't know, something gruesome, a bloody murder or something. So rather than just have them sitting around as useless pieces of resin because I didn't love them I decided to jazz them up with some little stickers because I hate things going to waste I figured if I covered the worst of the piece of this one with stickers then I could salvage it and just have the cool technique the little bits that did work between the stickers showing through so let's get back to my mini review while I'm sticking 
these stickers in a hundred different places. Um, yeah, I'm going to be using the resin in future. I found it, it did take a little bit longer than my normal resin to cure, but I really liked how shiny and hard it came out when it was cured. Easy to trim and sand, um, bubble free. It's, it is like a really good resin. I mean, I have tried a few resins over the years and a lot of epoxies pretty much do the same job, but the difference is usually in whether they're thin or thick and how many bubbles there are. I would say this is slightly on the thinner side than the resin I'm used to which is why it's so good at getting rid of bubbles but it means you do have to be a bit more careful when you use it to dome your pieces. It is a bit thinner so you might have to let your resin sit and thicken up before you dome pieces if you like a thick dome but in my case when I finish these pieces I just do a thin dome and it worked just fine. So you can use this as a doming resin but just have to make sure you don't overfill your dome piece or it will flow everywhere because it is just a bit on the runnier side. So I'm just chucking on, these are actually stickers for card making. I have sheets and sheets of these metallic stickers in gold, bronze and silver because I do a lot of paper crafts and they're really great for resin. You can get so many varieties on places like eBay or Amazon and they're just really adhesive and really great for things like if you prefer doing your pieces where you stick stickers on the front of your piece and then dome them. They lie nice and flat and they dome over absolutely great and look like you have embedded them in your resin. So I'm going to seal my wee stickers now. I'm just going to mix up more of this resin and I'm not preheating it, I'm just doing it straight from the cup to the bowl. Now, as you can see, I was having problems with neatly pouring the resin from these bottles. The nozzles make it pretty difficult to get your resin out of the bottles. You don't have much control. So later on, I decided to decant my resin. That's the only downside I would say is the bottles are not great from pouring from. So if you're going to get them, get something you can decant into which makes for easier pouring. Now the same technique I use when doming all the time is to first put a really thin layer and spread it out really thin to every edge because resin is self leveling and as long as you have that base layer all the way to the edges you can then just dollop some in the middle and it will spread itself out. Just spreading it out with the back of my spoon. My main goal when doing resin is to avoid touching it at all costs because even though it may not affect me or get through my barrier cream there is still that possibility that it can cause skin irritation so I just try not to touch resin if I can help it and if I do touch it I wipe it off immediately and reapply barrier cream. So I'm just layering on my resin now that I've spread it out letting it level itself out to the edges. And it makes a nice little dome. Any little bits that need help moving along, just maneuver them. You're basically babysitting your resin, helping it find the edge and being very gentle with it. You don't want it to spray over the edges. Spray? No, pour. I said spray because it's in a spray bottle. So I'm just using the alcohol technique there again and it gets rid of all the bubbles. I think it's my new favourite technique my heat gun is now retired and can go live in the cupboard. So this is after two days I left them to cure as you can see it really brings out that detail and that was one that I used as a colorant test. This one didn't, didn't turn out too bad but it's still not my favorite and I'm showing you that my nails are a disaster. I was doing the garden all that week and I ruined my nails, got them so dirty and my hands have become gardeners hands cuts and scrapes. Now with this resin even after curing you can still trim off the excess with sharp scissors as I'm doing here at a little bit over pour that went onto the back of my piece and then I'm just sanding it down with a regular nail file. I have a ton of these because they're perfect for resin and it just sands it nice and smooth and we can finally finish the pieces. This is how the resin balls look. 
And as I said before about them being difficult to pour from, I got myself a little ketchup and mustard bottles and I am going to decant my resin because I need more control when I'm measuring out resin. I don't like if it spills down the sides of the bottles as there's more chance of it touching my skin or getting all over my desk. So at least this way it will be cleaner and the bigger bottles can be closed up and put on my desk until I need to refill these. It means I'm not opening and shutting them all the time and oxidizing the rest of my resin. So I'm just marking these so I know which one's which when I come to refill my bottles. And there we go, much cleaner, much more precision in measuring out my resin and it doesn't pour all down the edge of the bottle when I stop. You can get these little bottles on eBay, they're really cheap. You can get them in many different sizes too. I've got massive ones for my other resin, but I like these little ones far better. Now this time I don't need to worry about degassing because I'm going to be adding in some glitter. I'm just cleaning up my spoons as I go. Baby wipes and alcohol works a treat. Now with glitter, the best thing is really, really fine glitter. If you don't want it to sink, it will stay a bit suspended. If you are having a problem with your glitter sinking, let your resin thick up first or use excessive amounts of glitter so it makes your resin a little bit on the thick side and it won't sink. Thicker, chunkier glitter will always sink a little bit, but this really fine stuff, really, really fine stuff, this is like cosmetic grade, tends not to sink. Spread it out just like before, get it to all those edges so that you can add extra in the middle and it will self level. Okay, so this is the mold package that arrived while I've been poorly as you can see it is a mask and this mold here this lovely mold which I am so desperate to use but I can't while well, I'm not working with resin but they have been so super patient and told me just to get well and not to worry about it but the next resin thing when I'm allowed to use resin will be this lovely blessed mold and thank you for the masks now as you can see this is the piece up close because sadly I could not find the rest of any videos to show you a finished piece. Because I did this so many months ago um, I kind of lost them and didn't have the pieces to finish filming which kind of sucks and because I can't use resin well obviously can't do it right now. So I hope that was informative in some way and that you enjoyed this video. I hope you tune in for the next one. Don't forget to follow me on here, leave a comment below, like this video because it really helps and I will catch you next time.